Today, I want to talk to you about estrogen, particularly how estrogen hormone replacement therapy has been vilified as a source of cancer. If you have ever heard that estrogen directly causes breast cancer, ovarian and uterine cancers, today's video is really important for you to watch because I am going to be demystifying and debunking and uncovering a lot of misinformation about estrogen that have often been assumed and even supported by medical providers in total avoidance by their patients. I'm gonna uncover science that literally is going to be counter to a lot of your medical providers. So this information today is something I know you are not being told by your OBGYN or your breast surgeons or even your breast cancer providers. Today, this information might just save your life and it might limit the recurrence of a breast cancer or estrogen specific cancer. And it can change your experience as an aging female. Let's dig into today's extremely important information. Welcome back friends. My name is Dr. Melissa Gallagher. I'm a functional medicine provider and a naturopathic physician. And I want to tell you first and foremost, estrogen is not, it is not the enemy of any breast cancer or any cancer case that you might be concerned about in your body or maybe a family member. This is the biggest piece of misinformation that is coming out of the mouths of so many medical providers. Today's topic is absolutely paradigm shifting in relation to estrogen and breast cancer. This might send shockwaves into the YouTube health sphere and I'm okay with it because you need to know this information. And I have over 15 years of working with breast cancer patients and patients who are seeking to balance their hormones. And this is a tricky topic. I post to my email community, which is a big community. If you want to participate and join, I'll have a link where you can get access to our monthly roundup. It's a newsletter I post with information. In this email, I had a product review, product highlight. It wasn't even a natural or bioidentical hormone replacement option, but I had numerous email responses, flabbergasted females, women who are patients and consumers of my content and use a lot of the products I recommend were absolutely pissed. They were upset, they were disgruntled, and they were shocked that I would even recommend something that would be estrogen balancing because they run the risk of breast cancer recurring and how dare I communicate any type of topic or recommendation to enhance your estrogen balance as women who maybe are dealing with breast cancer, who are in recovery or in that phase of limiting the recurrence. So I want to dig into this because this really, this is a really serious situation. Hormones, female hormone balance, reproductive hormone balance is the foundation to optimal female wellness and female aging. And as we get older, our hormonal balance, our balance and optimal levels of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone lead to reduced risk of heart disease, of bone density issues, osteopenia and osteoporosis being the big ones, but also the risk of having a hip break, a leg or bone break, that could end up being a fatal scenario. And now we even have clinical research that shows hormonal balance, female hormonal balance is critical for brain protection, particularly lowering a risk of dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and, and the aging process of the brain. The literal shrinking of our brain cells and the reduction of neural rejuvenation. So this topic, I know I'm walking into it. I know that there are gonna be a lot of people that comment on today's video that are gonna be outraged. I totally get it. The reality is that the science shows estrogen fortification, be it a cream or a suppository, a natural, estrogen enhancement to balance estrogen levels in the body is not the thing that turns on cancer cells. In fact, the research shows that estrogen is a breast protectant. It not just protects our breast tissue, but it actually helps minimize mitochondrial damage, which the reality is a lot of 
cancer and the result of a weakened immune system and the proliferation of cancer cells comes ultimately from mitochondrial, mitochondrial damage, elevations in inflammation. And what we see through science and data is that hormone replacement therapy, estrogen and progesterone and testosterone actually protects not just the brain, but all of our cells from the aging process. It actually fires up all of these receptors that need and require estrogen to be more youthful, to be combative, if you will, to the aging process, combative to mitochondrial damage, and actually becomes this protectant of our cells against potential risk of breast cancers or other gynecological or any other cancers like colorectal cancers and even liver related cancers. And this is really important because our standard of care in the medical community that is catering to women that are either preemptively addressing mastectomies and removal of their ovaries because of BRCA genes, or they may be getting genetic testing and they're high, showing high predisposition to breast cancer, or who are undergoing lumpectomies and, and dissection of lymph nodes and biopsies and are going through the traditional standard of care, the idea of using hormone replacement as a tool to keep the female body protected from cancer is not, it is not matching science. It's not matching the data, but it's also causing a seriously negative effect on the assorted symptoms these cancer patients and post-cancer phase of their life is dealing with. For instance, they're dealing with hot flashes, major mood swings, they're dealing with bone deterioration, and they're dealing with an assortment of mood imbalances and fatigue and droopy, saggy skin, and overall an accelerated aging process. And more often than not, the things that are causing these cancer patients to die of, the mortality rate, is not coming from the cancer itself, it's from the net effect of that weakened hormonal balance within the body that causes you know, greater risk to their, them dying of a stroke or from dying of secondary conditions from a broken hip and even showing early stages of dementia. This is really important because I do not, I do not want people to freak out over this content. The reality is, is there's a lot of research, particularly in the scope of looking at the role estrogen is playing on the female body and how we have great receptivity to not just estrogen, but testosterone and even progesterone for keeping our cells and our body youthful and protecting our body against the normal oxidative aging process. Now with aging comes our risk of cancer. And it's one of the reasons why if you look at the traditional cancer patient age group, they're anywhere from 10, 15 to 20 years away from menopause, which is counterintuitive when you really dig into it. That tends to be when they have the lowest level of estrogen. So the idea of estrogen leading to their cancer or feeding their cancer, even though they're in a phase of life where their lowest levels of estrogen and progesterone occur, if we look at it specifically for what it is, it's the reduction of the protective estrogen, the protective testosterone, the protective progesterone that leads to mitochondrial damage and the progression of disease. This I know is going to blow minds. I, I, I totally understand it. And I, I know this will be one of multiple videos, but I needed to address the angst my community felt when I said, we need to help your body balance estrogen metabolism. Ultimately in cancer cases, what causes cancer? It's not the estrogen, it's not the progesterone or testosterone. It is hinged on some receptivity of estrogen or progesterone. And then we have some that aren't receptive to either. But more importantly, it's the body's own natural production via fat cells, the production of, of harmful estrogens. And our fat cells, we have certain types of fat cells that actually can manufacture estrogen. That is the more harmful self-inducing estrogenic effect that can lead to cancer. Not from a bioidentical or a soy or yam based estrogen progesterone cream. 
What we see is ultimately cancer receptivity gets turned on by a genetic and an enzymatic function. And it all boils down to the aromatase enzyme and the gene. That functionality of this gene and this enzyme, that, so we, it's kind of like GABA. GABA is a, an amino acid, it's also a neurotransmitter. In this case, the aromatase is both an enzyme and it's also a genetic kind of code. And what happens is the amount of fat cells that we carry turn on by way of their own manufacturing of estrogen, turns on the aromatase receptivity. So it, it's like flipping a switch in the body. That light, that light switch cannot get flipped by adding estrogen or progesterone or testosterone into the body. The studies do not show that. Sadly, our standard of care sees estrogen as the ultimate enemy. And in fact, if we utilize optimal hormone balancing that leads to the foundation of optimal female health, we will see, as studies show, massive reduction in the recurrence of breast cancer and estrogen dominant cancers. We will see even using a <laughs> zoological hormone replacement like Premarin, which is an estrogen enhanced horse urine that actually is being used by the medical community in many cases. And what we see, ladies, is that estrogen protects our brain. Estrogen protects our bones. It helps our vaginal process feel more youthful. We minimize vaginal atrophy. We have more comfortable intercourse and in exchange with our husband or our partner. The science shows that women who take hormone replacement. Now in my category as functional medicine provider, I'm talking about natural hormones and more bioidentical hormones, not synthetic, but we're talking about natural enhancement of estrogen, progesterone, and even testosterone. The most critical thing that happens is there's a reduction, upwards of 47% reduction in the cancer reoccurrence. The science, literally shows that after seven years, women who take hormone replacement therapy have a recurrence rate or risk of recurrence that sits at 4.5%. Now the opposite, women who don't take any hormones, no sort of hor hormone enhancement like progesterone or estrogen, their recurrence risk is over 20%. And we also see that women who use estrogen hormone replacement therapy, they actually have a lowering, a lessening of their mortality risk. And this includes the mortality risk of breast cancer and a mortality risk of those secondary conditions, heart disease, colorectal cancers, the traditional metastasis types of cancers and even reduction in the dementia cases. That also includes the bone breaks, the hip breaks, the leg breaks as they're, they're getting older. So there is a reduction in osteopenia, osteoporosis, particularly when we're looking at my breast cancer patients, this is really, 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 really important information. And I hope you hit that share button. I might have blown your mind today. I might be sharing with you some research and some studies that you've never heard about. And as always, my goal is to help you lead the most optimized wellness oriented life and lifestyle. And when it comes to talking about breast cancer, I cannot ignore the science. And I also can't let the industrial, I'm going to say industrial. I can't let the industrial fear and even the medical ignorance lead you down the path of abandoning hormone replacement therapy because that is the key to you live, living and leading your most optimized life after your cancer and after menopause. So ladies, I hope you take into consideration this information. I will also post the data, the scientific research and the clinical studies I'm referencing and have used to compile all this information to convey to you. I'll post that in the description box below. That's going to be really important because I know there's going to be a lot of people who might be commenting who just completely lose their minds. And I expect that, and that's okay. This is a paradigm shifting topic. 
And with that, people need to kind of settle into this information because we're not hearing it and we need to hear it. So I hope you feel inspired to hit the share button and post this on your social channels, share it via email, tell all of your female friends, and even recommend your doctors watch this or at least reference the materials I've used to compile this data for you. It's really important that we all really have a different mindset around hormones, especially hormones after breast cancer, because it can be just so life-changing in terms of the optimal lifestyle a female leads. And it doesn't have to be like what I witnessed and experienced in our own family. My aunt Debbie was butchered in her first bout of breast cancer. And then it came back again. And then she went through all these like crazy treatments and then it went to her bones. And then she was on steroids and gained a ton of weight and just was miserable. And 12 years of witnessing her not have the quality of life the, the data showcases hormone therapy would have greatly, greatly improved her life. I wish, obviously I was a teenager at the time when she passed, um, but I wish I would have known this, be able to convey this to her, to help her. So if this touches one female out there, I'll have at least been able to help you and, or somebody in your life. So I appreciate you watching. I look forward to reading all the commentary and I will see you on our next video.